Hey guys, welcome to the Investor's Guide of Memphis Real Estate. I am your host, Dean Harris, and as always, I'm with Douglas Kipworth. How are you? Hey man, doing great. We're bringing you this podcast to give you guys the boots on the ground knowledge to be a successful real estate investor here in Memphis. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook page, Spotify, wherever you listen to the podcast. Uh, show sponsors are listed on your screen below. We could not do the show without those guys run our business. Uh, it's Corlin uh, Financial, Crestcore Property Management, Triumph Construction, Local Title, and Will Griffin with Griffin Cliff Everton and Mashmeyer. Yep. Great group of guys and gals that help us run our business, so we're happy to have them. Um, I help buyers and sellers every day. If you have that question about a, a rental property or an investment property here in Memphis, Dean at Crestcore.com, I'm happy to help you with that. Today's show, Douglas, we're going to dive right into it. Interest rates are not falling. Um, we have talked um, yeah. to or blue in the face, really, about interest rates and where they're at and what's happening. And uh, it's been the topic, I guess. Dang, two years? Almost two years now. It's yeah, been kind of a sure. topic and we've been going up. So, you know, we're, we're just going to talk briefly today about, you know, what where our head's at with it, what we're thinking. I, I'm... I'm not planning in my mind for any kind of major interest rate drop there. You know, they've stated they're going to drop a couple of times this year. Um, I think we've seen one slight reduction or have we no, seen I any mean, at I think all? They, I think they, they signaled initially and said, Hey, we're planning. It looks like it could happen now. You know, we're six months, almost six months in and it's things have, haven't happened like they thought. Yeah. So it's now like, uh, maybe this year, you know, mm. definitely seems more definite in next year, but yeah, they will come down at some point. They will go up again at some point. Yeah, but so, yeah, um, I think when you look at the dot plot, we've talked about that when the yeah. bed meets and where they're saying, it's like, yeah. Hey, they, all of those board of governor members see rates going down in the near to long term. Not the short term, not not tomorrow, right. but in the next six ish months, they see it going down. So there's a question of whether it's going to happen late summer, into the fall. Some people are like, "Hey, there's an election. What is? How does that play into it?" Yeah, you know, they say they try to be apolitical. You know, kind of outside of the political arena, almost freezing the rate during that time, so it doesn't appear as if they're one side or the one other. side or the other. But the flip side is like, "Hey, they if it, if it says we need to if." The data says lower it, even in the midst of it, supposedly they will do that. So it, it, it's an interesting time for sure. How do you um, think that affects the law? Like, how does that affect your business? How does that affect ours with like with me? You know, the houses that I bought last year at a higher rate, I, you know, I'm waiting on that price still reduction. Stay in. Still the, stay the, the, the interest rate reduction. reduction. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're lower, but they're not low enough for me to Correct. pull the trigger to, Correct. to, to refi. refi. No, yes. I'm going to wait a little bit longer. You got to wait a little bit longer. So that's, that's, where, that's, that's the effect. That's the effect, right? But, I mean, I think we, we, we can get off on, on this in a lot of different ways, which I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I, I saw a great thing from, from an economist the other day, but, but a banker. I think it was a J.P. Morgan it's not Jamie Dimon CEO, but somebody on his team or or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking managing trillions of dollars and having to in the bank side, not the the economist side, but on the bank side. Mm -hmm. And they were like, "Hey, man, what you need to think about is not when, but if." If they go up or if they go down, how are you going to stay in the game? So it's kind of like the sports analogy. What happens if they run this defense? What happens if they run this defense on you? What happens if they blitz? What happens if they drop back? Well, it's like you have to be able to read the defense and call the plays. You have to have enough plays to call. So it's like, I think for us, it's like, okay, if rates stay, if rates don't change mm -hmm. or for the next year, what are you going to do? Can you still stay in that situation you're in? Yeah. You can. Okay, yeah. so you're in a good spot. You're in an okay spot. You're not in a bad spot. No. It, what happens if rates go down? What if they go back up? Do you have those scenarios planned out? Yeah. yeah. So that you can capitalize in any market. So there's the place to be. Yes. That, that's what I was trying to figure out and, and, and ask you is the place to be is prepared. <laughs> yeah. 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 In, in a state of preparation. In life. In but, life. But, yeah. but I mean, specifically in this, this it's like a sure. state of preparation of, hey, you know, 
I'm not going to freeze buying. I've slowed way down this year. There that's you go. For sure. Yeah. But I'm not freezing and I'm not completely installing out, no. but I'm being a little bit more strategic because there I did go. buy so many last year. Yep. Right. So I am, I am proceeding with caution this year versus last year. The pricing was so far down. Like, and I've already seen the pricing of the homes that I bought last Tick year. Up. Yeah. You can't get them anymore. And I knew that was coming. Correct. It's a little painful right now with a high interest rate. Right. Yes. But, the price that I had those houses at or that I bought them at are still are higher now. I, I know this because I'm pricing them out. They're yeah, probably 10 yeah, to 15% for sure. for, higher than they were last year yes. already. And that these are the ones that you could burn that were in terrible shape. Yeah. There's a little bit more value putting on this. So anyway, I, I, that's where I wanted to, that's, that's yes. what I was asking. How does it affect ours? That's how it affects me. Yes. Um, I have to make sure that with going into the next year that I'm, I'm understanding that it might not drop a, as much as I want it to. Right? That's right. So the next deals that I buy are going to be a lot better deals with a lot more cash flow, And I probably won't yes. be able to buy as many of them preparing for those higher rates, right? Yeah. But I think you, and I, I have purchased some more recently in the past, you know, 12 months. Mm -hmm. It's like similar to you. And there may be a little more cash flow challenged than I would like. Yep. But that, uh, the thing, and, and I had this as, as, as on our next is, is to don't forget about appreciation and rent growth. If mm -hmm. anything, this time has taught us when rates are higher, there really is this concept that real estate is an inflation hedge, right? And so we've been doing this for about 20 plus years, mm -hmm. 2002 ish, turn of the century, we've been, been in this business. And we really haven't seen inflation over that 20 year period. We've seen low interest rates low, and, and low um, kind of appreciation. But we haven't seen what we're seeing the last eight or nine months. Right. And so, so yes, maybe it seemed like an inflation hedge. There just wasn't much inflation. So it was, it wasn't a lot to see, but I'll tell you what we witnessed is as soon as inflation came into the economy, rents went up, mm -hmm. asset prices went up and we real estate owners benefited from that. Mm -hmm. And so to your point is like when rates are still high, it's like, man, be an asset owner. Now it's hard. To, how do you accumulate assets when rates are high? That's the challenge, but we're trying to figure out different ways to go about doing that. On that, the lower entry point homes are what's working. So if you're figuring out what works and what doesn't okay. work and how you can navigate with a higher rate, this was the my next point. So it's a great segue. Is if we as if we practiced. <laughs> <laughs> lower entry point, it's you know, seventy to one hundred and twenty five thousand dollar homes are working with loans and the tenant base is nine hundred to twelve hundred with there. Yes. That's a solid tenant base here. I don't recommend I've always told folks if you're out of state, I don't recommend going below an 800 tenant here. No. It's tough. It's just a different tenant base. This is a 900 to 1200, maybe 1300 tenant base that I'm talking about in the 70 to 125, 130 range. Yeah. You can get into that property with the current rate. You're in most cases can cash flow some to keep you alive. It isn't awesome, but it keeps you in the game. Your asset collecting during this time. You're uh, uh, still building your business. And then when rates do come back down, you'll have an opportunity to adjust that in the future if you want to. So to me, it's like, hey, how do you make, you know, my first question to you is like, how does this change our business and how does it affect it? Right. And we, we talked about that. Yes. Now it's like, OK, while you're in it and involved, what is working and what isn't working? Two hundred and twenty thousand dollar houses that rent for two thousand dollars now. That doesn't work anymore. Two years ago, that worked, right? That's Unless below one percent. Put, put putting a, a, a bigger down payment down, Unless you're or buying putting, down your rate. That's yes, right. I bet that's right. One it, or the other. It's hard to leverage it. It's hard. Yes, those, it's very hard at eight high. and a half percent. Yes. you know. So, but you get down into your borrowing, you know, a hundred thousand dollars at that. It doesn't quite have the same impact. Your rent ratio is a little bit higher. Yes, you know, per you know for entry point. So. To me, it's like, you know, your reaction, what is it doing to your business? It's making us slow down and be a little bit more strategic, right? Yes. What do you do? What's the product that's selling? It's this lower end home that's selling. It's a, I mean, I could look on my, my sheet now of closings for, for this month and of, I think we're closing 24 this month and I believe over 15 or below $150,000, yeah, yeah. right? It's that price point that's working. And, and you and I know from rents, renters that nine ninety five just below a thousand, there's psychological to that as well as 
you know, 1095, 1195 in that, like you said, 900 to $1,200 range, Mm -hmm. you see that, that that is a, you know, it's, it's, it sells like hotcakes. It's not hard. Once you have a good turn, you have the house properly prepared, whether it's a a burr or a turn, it's an easy market. It's a, it's the big, in the bell curve, that's the, the, the most renters are in that market. Yes, that's and that's kind of where I float in that yes, 1100 to 1400 range. Sweet spot. And I don't yes. typically have a lot of people are like do you have a hard time getting rented? Not really. You know, not cuz we do a good job on the rehabs and all yes. that. So Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean I think in part of what where this is is like and you said it, I mean this in my experience is like asset accumulation is the name of the game. Mm-hmm. And so how do you how do you go about doing that? The, I I found the people that are challenged uh, economically, they don't have enough assets. One of three things. They don't have enough assets. Mm-hmm. They don't have enough. They're not adding enough value through their economic contribution mm-hmm. so that their income, they don't have enough income yep. or they have to, they, they spend too much, yep. you know? So it's like, you can only contribute so much economic. I mean, cutting your sp- expenses is tough, <laughs> right? You got to live. Yeah. It's, it's hard to live. The expenses, I mean, you and I have talked about this before. Everybody pays the same price to go to Chipotle. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much income you have. That's right. So it's hard to cut those expenses. Everybody pays the same phone plan, the cable plan. The, yeah. you know. So it's like there's a minimum threshold. So it's like how do you get your economic contribution up to make more income? And then how do you build assets? Because if nothing, we have seen that with stocks, and real estate in this inflationary period, those are the, that's where the wealth has been cr- created and yeah. bolstered and boosted for everybody who already had assets or is somehow able to get into those assets during this time, during this inflationary period, because that's, right. that's when it's increased. And the wealth, I mean, they talk about the wealthy have become more wealthy, you know? Uh, that's all I'm hearing. That's all you're hearing. So it's like, how can we help? You and me and everybody get assets. Yes. So that to everybody that, can participate <laughs> in that. Like the, the rules of the game are, have been laid out. Like if you want to increase your wealth, you got to own assets. Have to. You have to. You can only make so much economically dependent unless you're some type of athlete, entertainer, prodigy, you, you see, stated- super CEO that makes hundreds of million dollars. But the normal Joes like us, there's only so much income we can generate daily from our day job. So we've got to accumulate assets. You told, you said this a few weeks ago in one of the podcasts, but like you're, you're no, you have to invest. You have to be an investor. That's what I'm saying. You have, you have to, to be, be an investor, investor of some unless kind. you're, unless you're uber talented, like off the chart, crazy virtuoso, yeah. You're you're gonna be like everybody. And maybe you make thirty thousand, maybe you make two hundred and fifty thousand. That's a big discrepancy. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, the people who make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars aren't the people who are making two hundred and fifty million dollars or two billion dollars no. a year. No. I mean that's stratosphere. But, so you somewhere. gotta get your way up that little bit of income chain from 30,000 to call it $200,000 in household income. So that's you and your spouse and maybe a kid contributing to that $200,000 income Yeah, and put those, put that excess money into assets to work, to work. So I love that part of it because you've got to be so like, you know, just kind of tie all this into the boat with the interest rate, you know, you can't sit there because the rate's high. You've got to be an investor. You've got to continue to play the game. I mean, do you think that when rates go up to 12 or 15, if they did, that there's no one buying investment real estate? No, of course they are. They have been for years. They did in the 70s. They were buying, I mean, not as not as much as they are now, but the, the people were buying rental homes, right? So I just, I, my, my yeah. point today was to, you know, if you're nervous about the rate, I'd, I'd relax. <laughs> it's yes. going to be here. It's not going anywhere. Uh, and it's more, more along the lines of the rest of this year is these are some of the ways you can stay involved. You've got to be an investor, just continue to, to, to uh, participate, whether it's knowledge, yeah. whether it's actually making offers. I mean, no one said that you have to pay the prices that are there, right? So That's let's right. make offers. Let's try to get yeah. that, that best deal yeah, for and, you. And so. negotiate that. That's right. You're right. You, and I said, everybody's got to be an investor. Yeah. Real estate's a great way to invest, mm-hmm. you know, and single family is, in my opinion, the best way to, to start, if not finish in real estate investing. 100%. So, great job. Anything else? No. All right, awesome. guys. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week.